The Reapers are a highly advanced machine race of synthetic organic starships. The Reapers reside in dark space, the vast, mostly starless space between galaxies. They hibernate there, dormant for 50,000 years at a time, before returning to the galaxy. These giant machines are ancient, their true name unknown. Reapers was a name bestowed by the Protheans, the previous galactic power 50,000 years before, and the Geth refer to them as the Old Machines. In the end, the Reapers spared little concern for whatever labels other races choose to call them, and merely claim that they have neither beginning nor end. The Reapers are the original creators of the Citadel and the Mass Relay Network. These massive constructs exist so that any intelligent life in the galaxy would eventually discover them and base their technology upon them, all part of a scheme to harvest the galaxy's sentient life in a repeating cycle of purges that has continued relentlessly over countless millennia. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lorcor Multiverse and today we're jumping into the Mass Effect Universe to look at one of the single most terrifying and intimidating species of this universe. The Reapers. Let's move. Before the Reapers came to be, the galaxy was under the thrall of a race known as Leviathans. They created an intelligence to solve the problem of organics and synthetics killing each other. However, this intelligence turned on them, slaughtering most of their kind and processing others into the very first true Reaper, Harbinger. Harbinger's form, that of the Leviathans themselves, became the template for subsequent reapers harvested from the galaxy's races on cyclical purges over the next millions of years. In order to speed up the time between harvests, the reapers constructed the mass relay network and the citadel to coordinate it. Engineered creatures called keepers were placed on the citadel to maintain the station during their absence and to open it for them when they decide to invade. 50,000 years before the current galactic era, the Reapers initiated a purge against the Protheans, the dominant spacefaring life forms at the time. The Protheans tried to resist like so many others before them, only to fail due to the Reapers' physical and insidious might. Not all Protheans perished in the genocide. A cadre of elite scientists, hidden on Ilos, survived by hunkering down into stasis until the danger had passed. Upon waking, it took them decades of study to realize how their civilization fell to the Reapers. But this discovery gave them the key to breaking the cycle forever. The Protheans developed a plan to forestall the impending Reaper attack for future generations of sapient, spacefaring species. This plan hinged on the fact that the Keepers have independently evolved and now only respond to signals from the Citadel itself. The Reaper Vanguard signals the Citadel, which in turn signals the Keepers to open the station's own mass relay ushering in the next Reaper invasion. However, the Prothean scientists used a reverse-engineered prototype mass relay, traveled to the Citadel, and altered the Citadel signal. The scientists succeeded, but could not do anything about their own population numbers. So they still died out, along with the rest of their race. From an aesthetic standpoint, the Reapers bear a superficial resemblance to cuttlefish or squid, with a bulky, semi-cylindrical body, a tapering plate over the rear, and five tentacle-like legs or arms extending from its front end. 
in addition to six jointed legs extending from its body. The rearmost of the larger legs have crescent-shaped extensions, colossal in size. Reapers are known to range from 160 meters to over 2 kilometers in length. The core of any reaper is constructed in the image of the species that was harvested to create it, while the exterior follows a standardized design that is most efficient for their purpose. When the Reaper fleet is revealed in dark space, they are shown to share the same basic design, but with great diversity in limb number, shape, and orientation, some with extended heads and others having multiple glowing eyes. This may illustrate the variety of Reaper subtypes, as it is revealed during the Reaper invasion of the galaxy that several different varieties of Reaper exist. Though this does not change the reality that lurking within the Reaper Carapus is the core Reaper that bears striking resemblance to the species harvested to create it. While their appearance outwardly varies between subtypes, all of them retain the same features of their forebears, the Leviathans, an ancient aquatic race that dominated the galaxy in ages past. The last known Reaper ships essentially copied the Leviathan form while the smaller ones diverge to varying degrees. Harbinger, the first Reaper ever created. Harbinger appears to be of a unique subtype. Alliance Intelligence identifies it as being the largest Reaper in the Armada, and its design differs notably from the capital ship subtype, having only four main legs and multiple glowing eyes. Exactly how much more powerful it is than normal Reaper capital ships is utterly unknown. Capital ships, also known as Sovereign Class, are the two kilometer long capital ships that are most well known Reaper subtypes. Their main weapon is a spinal mounted magneto hydrodynamic cannon with a yield of 132 to 450 kilotons of TNT, which dwarfs the main gun of an Everest class Alliance Dreadnought. No known ship, not even a Dreadnought, has been known to survive a hit from this weapon. Capital ships are also armed with multiple cannons in their tendrils capable of shearing through most opposing vessels in a single hit. A point defense system similar to the Guardian systems favored by organics for anti-fighter and anti-projectile purposes and are capable of unleashing swarms of oculus drones to engage fighter-sized craft. They are extremely durable capable of taking the continuous and simultaneous fire of four dreadnoughts before they start to lose their kinetic barriers. Troop transports vary in length between 200 meters and one kilometer and are used to transport husks to unconquered worlds and bring victims to reaper processing centers. They lack sentience being remotely controlled by the reapers themselves. Reaper processors are mobile centers for mass DNA harvesting. Like the troop transports, processors lack sentience being controlled remotely by the actual Reapers. Destroyers are only 160 meters in height but possess a formidable capacity for destruction despite their reduced stature, with their main gun easily capable of destroying cruisers in seconds. Unlike capital ships, they have four main legs along with five jointed appendages encircling their head. The frontal plates of a destroyer can fold to the side exposing a powerful beam weapon. They are used to escort the capital ships destroying smaller targets such as frigates and on the ground they are capable of unfolding their legs and walking to support the husks, becoming extremely powerful heavy walkers. They are nigh immune to ground vehicle fire and not at all fragile in space. However, a cruiser is noted to be able to take out a destroyer fairly quickly. Reapers and their technology have been observed to exert a disturbing influence on organic beings. 
this mental manipulation is known as indoctrination. Put simply, any organic being who is in close proximity to a reaper or certain reaper artifacts for too long comes to believe the reapers are correct in their goals and will do anything to serve them. Gradually, the mind is eroded until the individual becomes a mindless slave, no longer capable of independent thought. Reapers can control the rate of this process. Optimally, the subject is led to believe it is still acting on its own convictions. Indoctrination can drive people mad outright, and people deemed useful by the reapers are given just enough free will to remain competent at their tasks. The indoctrination is permanent, almost impossible to subvert, and is one of the most insidious weapons of the Reapers. Entire civilizations can be delivered into the Reapers' hands by indoctrination of the few influential individuals in their culture. During the invasion of Earth, the Reapers broadcast messages inviting diplomats into their holds to negotiate where they would then presumably be indoctrinated. A Reaper's indoctrination field can remain active even if it is largely disabled and incapable of action. A Cerberus science team was indoctrinated by being inside of a Reaper that had otherwise been floating derelict for 37 million years, its only obvious activity being the mass effect field generation. Even without the indoctrination influence, Reapers are immensely powerful warships and their technology is devastating. One armament common with various subtypes is a powerful magnetohydrodynamic weapon which ejects a stream of molten metal at a fraction of the speed of light, capable of tearing through a cruiser in a single sustained burst. The gigantic spinal mounted gun of capital class Reapers is able to rip through the hulls of even the largest of dreadnought class ships with ease effortlessly penetrating their kinetic shields. Reaper defences include a powerful shield that could block the projectiles of an entire fleet, along with an incredibly strong hull. Though they are sentient machines, the Reapers have habitable interiors that can transport a crew, either to help spread their indoctrinated slaves or to allow these slaves to tend to them, probably both. Speculation in the Codex suggests that each individual Reaper has a massive Element Zero Core, which, coupled with the likely enormous quantities of energies at its disposal, allows it to generate the staggering mass effect field needed to land ships of their size on a planet. However, the Reapers are not invincible. When the Reapers go into states of hibernation between cycles, they are vulnerable. By taking refuge in dark space, the Reapers ensure they will not be discovered by accident and destroyed while they wait for their vanguards to open the Citadel Mass Relay. A concentrated effort by the fleets of organic races could also destroy a Reaper, even if it is of full power. The Catalyst revealed that the Reapers came into existence long ago when the Leviathans conceived it to seek a solution to the inevitable struggle between organics and synthetics. This newly born Reaper intelligence decided that the Leviathans themselves risked conflict with synthetics and, using an army of pawns, forcibly processed them into Harbinger. Despite this betrayal, the surviving Leviathans do not believe the Catalyst was a mistake and believe the Catalyst's use of the Reapers is part of an experiment on a galactic scale to seek a truly permanent method of preserving life. For millions of years, the Reapers existed for the sole purpose of ensuring the ongoing existence of organic life in the galaxy, based on the assumption that all synthetic intelligences will eventually destroy their organic creators. This end result is believed by the Catalyst and the Reapers to be inevitable. As a consequence of technological advancement, organics will create synthetics to improve their own state of existence and synthetics themselves will evolve by means of surpassing their creators. Indeed, available evidence seems to point to the validity of their assertions. The Prothean civilization was threatened by synthetic uprisings before the Reapers wiped them out, 
and the Geth of modern times are viewed as a substantial threat to the peace in the galaxy. By harvesting technologically advanced species both organic and synthetic, and storing these old species within immortal reaper bodies, room is made for new life to flourish and grow, as was the case for primitive man. The continuity of life in the galaxy is assured through this cycle of extinction, as it ensures that organic life will never be fully exterminated before its time by synthetic life, as was demonstrated by the Quarians and the Geth. The Reapers leave no evidence of their conquest, nor of their existence, only desolate, barren ruins of those who came before. Extant information on them is so scant that they are known merely as boogeymen at best in many ancient cultures. The trap created by the Reapers was simple. A sentient species would develop an FTL drive, but would still be limited in its speed. By leaving a network of relays capable of instant transport across the galaxy that led to the impressive citadel, the Reapers ensured that it would become the center of galactic civilization. Further, Sovereign implies that the presence of the mass relays would lead the sentient species down a predetermined route with regards to weapons and armor technology, both of which are based upon Element Zero technology for the Citadel races. As Sovereign explains, by using it, your society develops along the paths we desire. The relays also serve to reduce the amount of time it takes for galactic civilization to advance, thus shortening the time between the Reaper's harvests. Once the sentient races have established themselves on the Citadel with the aid of the Keepers, a lone Reaper vanguard stationed within the galaxy sends a signal to the Citadel, instructing the Keepers to activate the station's hidden mass relay. This opens a path between the Citadel and Dark Space, and then the Reapers flood through killing the leaders of the assembled species before branching out and harvesting all spacefaring life around them. Because the Reapers first enter the galaxy at the point that they have ensured will be the centre of galactic politics, information and finance, they are able to cripple any resistance almost before the Citadel civilizations have any idea that they are even under attack. The Citadel also gives them control of the relay network, cutting off star systems from each other and destroying communications. The Reapers then use their control of the Citadel and its data to begin the most sinister phase of their attack. Records allow them to track down every settled planet and attack them, harvesting their populations or enslaving them through indoctrination. Once they have harvested the galaxy, the Reapers wipe every trace of their existence from the record and retreat back into dark space. During their invasion at the end of each cycle, the Reapers gather and process vast numbers of individuals from each of the galaxy's sentient spacefaring races. Victims who cooperate with or are captured by Reaper husks are rounded up into camps, where the husks select individuals deemed fit for processing it is believed that the husks use scent or chemical receptors to analyze the genetic composition of victims. Those who are deemed unsuitable are turned into more husks. Individuals who are determined to be suitable for processing are loaded into reaper processors where they are ushered into single person pods. Like a slaughterhouse, the interior of the processor is designed to prevent any visual or auditory contact between individuals being processed. Once in the pods, Reaper nanites dissolve the victim's body into a raw genetic paste for ease of transport. This paste will then be used in the construction of a newborn Reaper with the victim's minds being preserved to form the Reaper's gestalt consciousness. The only known facilities used for Reaper construction are located on the Citadel and within the Collector base in the Galactic Core. 
Available information suggests that a single race is harvested during each cycle to produce Reaper capital ships. It appears that other spacefaring races harvested during the cycle are used to produce destroyer class Reapers. Exactly how or why this distinction is made is unknown. The rate of killing during a harvest is staggering. During the invasion of Earth, at least 400 processors were present, and the number of humans processed each day was an estimated 1.86 million. At this rate, the entire planet would be depopulated in a decade. We are only just starting to scratch the surface of the true reality and horror of the Reapers. There is much that can be said of the specifics of indoctrination, the conversion of biological forms into digital shells for the Reapers, the cycle, the merciless intent, the weapons platforms, the specifics of their origins. If you'd like to see all of this covered in future Law Corps content, as I already have a load lined up, let me know in the comments down below. Big shout out to the Accursed Hunter over on Patreon, and until next time, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the multiverse.